me if you want. Sure to make sure play. And I'm back with another Rotten Review you love so much. Yeah, you love my Rotten Reviews, don't you like? And today, we're going to be reviewing, or review bombing, if that's what it's called these days. Huh? Marvel Studios is Captain Marvel that features a character with the name Marvel. Some comic books should never be adapted to the movie screen because they look ridiculous. Like this one. Your power. Yeah man, those PlayStation 2 graphics look pretty good. Now unlike most critics who go in wanting to hate or love a movie and write a negative or positive review for it based on their agenda, what we do here at Rotten Review is we don't even watch the movie and we give it a negative or a fresh review. Fair, balanced and efficient. Hmm. Without doubt guys, this is the most controversial movie of the year. From her early days of being in a hardcore punk band, Brie Larson then transitioned into acting and now she has found herself in the role of Captain Marvel. A lot of fans want you to play Captain Marvel when uh, to there's... Play? Isn't that a boy? Uh, it's supposed to be the first female-led uh, The Marvel first female? Movie. Yeah, I mean, so would, would I be playing a man? Oh wait, no, Chris Evans is Captain America. Who's Captain Marvel? BM to the a you have super strength! I have no idea what I'm talking about. The newest person joining us, Captain Marvel herself, Brie Larson! What was it like stepping in her costume for the first time? I thought that's what I look like. That's not what I look like. <laughs> I wasn't sure if it was the right thing for me. I Ray Leonard, you love your face. You know, the thing that's been the most exciting now is, like on social media, I get sent a lot of pictures of young girls in the Captain Marvel costume, and I'm excited to see more of that. She's such a great symbol for young girls, and I'm realizing what a deficit we have, that we don't have more of those. Um, I think it's really cool to see a girl in, you know, a Batman costume or a Spider-Man costume, but I'm really excited that there's like a symbol of women. I think that that's really important. I don't really know when I knew anything. I don't feel like I know anything at all, which I've sort of told Marvel that I don't, I want to know as little as possible because then even when friends ask, I don't feel like I have to lie. I can just be like, oh. She is perfect in every way for the mm -hmm. part and really has the range that is going to be required for our textured and flawed and deep and real Carol Danvers. I don't feel like I know anything at all. Of being a symbol that can inspire everyone. Um, everyone. Um, Now at this point of the review, I want to insert a video from my good friend Randall. Yeah, R.I.P. Yeah, he was murdered by Lord Feige. Coming at ya with that gangster fire. Marvel Studios' Kevin Feige wishes Captain Marvel had been released before Wonder Woman. I'm not surprised, considering Wonder Woman was a box office hit, and this balding cuckold is now figuring out how he's going to sell Captain SJW to the masses. Ah yes, release it on International Woman's Day. Cheap. Opportunist, gimmick, from the house of lies. By the time that movie is released, there will have been 20 MCU movies with male superheroes. Marvel spent more time teasing the idiot fanbase with the possibility of a solo movie for C-list character Black Widow, the one that Marvel Entertainment chairman Isaac Perlmutter thinks is bad for his toy business. With Feige admitting defeat to WB and Wonder Woman, this article by Joanna Robinson didn't age well. You all know Joanna. She has a blue tick next to her name, and refuses to give Zack Snyder any credit, ever. Why it's okay that the Captain Marvel news keeps trickling in slowly, she said, Marvel is actually right to make us wait so long for a female superhero. Lol, she is probably performing mental gymnastics after hearing what her lord and savior said. And of course Marvel's lackeys Collider are ready to brush this sign of weakness under the carpet. They tweeted, the future of the MCU is female, right? Because one Captain Marvel movie and a handful of women side characters and team up movies over the next 10 years and 20 more movies is a big risk and very different to what's come before and we should hail Lord and Savior Kevin Feige. Oh go f*** yourselves. A lot of the shells out there, in the media, 
and on, on YouTubes, hmm. they try to compare these Marvel movies to a lot of the greats out there. The Godfather, The French Connection, even the DC movies that they're in competition with. Captain Marvel is going to be their Man of Steel movie. It's going to be their Superman. Uh, this please! What I do is not up to you. I'm kind of done with you telling me what I can't do. Even in their posters, Marvel lack imagination. All they can do is copy everyone else. They even tried to copy my homeboy, Shah Rukh Khan. This is almost like a new form of religious and political brainwashing propaganda. It has happened over there, and now it is happening over here. They are now ripping off the influences of DC movies to come. Two years ago, Green Lantern cars will be Lethal Weapon in space. This year, Captain Marvel directors compare their movie to Lethal Weapon. Some people have already written off this movie as a cheap Green Lantern ripoff. Now I'm talking about Green Lantern from 2011. Now when the first trailer for this movie came out, everyone was pointing out at Brie Larson's lack of facial expression. And that negative attention got to Marvel so much, they told their directors, you better go out and tell everyone that her character development is like Robocop. Here man, wait just a minute like. Robocop, he got shot in the head, huh? he got blown to bits and then he stuck his face on a cyborg. But Captain Marvel, pathetic. Marvel says that this was inspired by Terminator 2. Yeah, because that was a chase scene. And this is a chase scene. <laughs> Let's pause it right there, guys. <laughs> Check this out. <laughs> this is some of the worst editing, eh? cinematography. This is like Taken 3, eh? when Liam Neeson tries to jump the fence. I said no. no. I said we heck were, no. We were... If Kurt Cobain was alive, huh, wearing his dresses and all that, I bet he'd be on the phone to that critic. He'd be like, you better rewrite that or I'm going to kill you. This is Kurt Cobain. You parasitic little fucking cunts. I'll fucking hurt you. I don't care if this is a recorded threat. Come on, pick up the phone. I suppose I could throw out a few thousand dollars, have you snuffed, but... Like Kurt Cobain would be really proud that his music is being used in a crappy movie to sell a merchandise for a mega corporation. Hmm. So typical of Marvel Studios, the house of no ideas, they're running out of ideas so they take Captain America and then they rehash it and they say, oh this is uh, before the Avengers. Even though we had the first Avenger, but no this is before the Avengers. After the first Avenger. So before the Avengers, there was Captain Marvel. Even before Captain Marvel, there was the first Avenger. Now all these websites and these YouTube channels, and they're like, don't compare Captain Marvel to Wonder Woman. No, you can't do that. Yeah, you can't compare these two women against each other. But they say that to their audience huh? and the fanboys out there. But they do it themselves on YouTube and the websites. Can you believe it? They want to make money off of people like you. So let me compare Captain Marvel to Wonder Woman and Alita Battle Angel just this one time. <laughs> just this one time. Let me, let me compare just this once. Just this once. <laughs> I was cast as Wonder Woman and all of these qualities I looked for, I found in her. She's full of heart, strength, compassion and forgiveness. She sees wrong that must be made right. She takes action when everyone around her is idle. She commands the attention of the world. And in doing so, she sets a positive example for humanity. So earlier this week, 
USC Annenberg's inclusive initiative released findings that 67% of the top critics reviewing the 100 highest grossing movies in 2017 were white males. Wonder Woman also struggles with her own love and hopes. She gets confused, insecure, and she's not perfect, and that's what makes her real. We wanted her to be universal, to be an inspiration to all people all around the world, and our plan was to make sure we didn't give too much attention to the fact that she's a woman. I do not need a 40-year-old white dude to tell me what didn't work for him about A Wrinkle in Time. It wasn't made for him. Am I saying that I hate white dudes? No, I'm not. I believe that it's not only our job to entertain, but our duty to inspire and educate for love and respect. And I'm also saying I don't hate white dudes. I'm just saying. And we will continue, band together, to make strides uniting for equality. Thank you very, very much. And for the third time, I don't hate white dudes. I think that's the most important point. Yes, this is a movie where young women will be inspired. But more so than that, you know, as a young moviegoer, there were many male protagonists that I related to. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I just think that now we have a strong, relatable female protagonist that young boys can also identify with. It's all about having an array of perspectives. The Marvel shells in the media have been promoting this movie non-stop to every mainstream normie out there. A hero to womankind. They were saying that this movie is going to open to $160 million opening weekend. Then it fell all the way down to $100 million plus. Yeah, solid opening they said. So when DC makes a ton of money at the box office, it's not a good movie. But when Captain Marvel may make less than expectations, it doesn't have to prove anything. And then the shit really hit the fan when Brie Larson says she doesn't want her press tour for Captain Marvel to be overwhelmingly white males. She sees the film as her form of activism. She wants you to send up GoFundMes to send girls to see Captain Marvel to make Disney more money. If this is the face of the MCU going forward, good luck with that fuckers. Check this out guys, we all know the fake feminists the fake wokeness in the Americas is trying to take over the world. And here's a movie starring Brie Larson, Basmati Blues. <laughs> she, she goes to India to save the Indians, teach them how to grow rice and all that. Let's click on it, see what this garbage is all about. We need someone they can believe in. You know, you've got some really good moves. You must have been Indian in a past life. We need to stop the it's okay, everyone. The white saviour, Brie Larson, is here to save all you Indians from yourselves. All you Americans, you can take your fake feminism, your phony wokeness, and you can stick it up your flat, bony backside. Now the doorbell. <laughs> that was the patriarchy that was ringing on my parade. Now, one thing I, I want to say, uh, one thing I love about you is you had a great story happen recently about inclusivity and diversity in press. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm a white male. <laughs> and I, 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 I commended you completely on that. But Thanks. most. I don't feel like I know anything at all. My interest in this talk of diversity is also talking about privilege. I mean, I'm really encouraged by things like how great the quality is on our phones now, mm -hmm. that people have the ability to make things. Yeah. That to me is like the beginning of this next phase of the revolution is saying like how can we bring it down to like this baseline level so that we can get to the stories that are just like on the ground. This please! Brie Larson was in an unfortunate position where she felt uncomfortable after an encounter with a male TSA agent at an airport. She tweeted, I merely smiled at a TSA agent and he asked for my phone number. To live life as a woman is to live life on the defense. race of noble warriors. Heroes. Noble warrior heroes. It's funny because it's an old woman fighting. Something in my past is the key to all of this. Jar Jar Banks was also the key to all of this. I think I had a life here. I think I had a life here. What are you telling me? 
But aren't you telling me? Why is she falling all the time? Ah, here, all you knuckleheads. Time to refill on your popcorns and your sodas. We're going to go into the rotten tomato scandal and how they came to the aid of Brie Larson and Marvel Studios. <gasps> da, da, da. Oh, now I need to do my own commentary on stories that Shaker's already done videos on. Quite you fool. All you have to do is take Shaker's videos and just edit them into your review. Ah, good thinking, Shorty. You're welcome, Shorty. So yesterday we saw Captain Marvel sink to 29%, 28% when it comes to the audience interest. But look how quick Rotten Tomatoes spring into action to help their Captain Marvel, to help Brie Larson and Marvel Studios. They are censoring the fans. Rotten Tomatoes changes their entire rating system after angry Captain Marvel fans complain. They say, if you can't beat them, silence them. The interested, not interested feature on Rotten Tomatoes has been part of the site for many, many years, but after the media complained about fans voicing their displeasure with the upcoming Captain Marvel by using the feature to say they weren't interested in the film, that option no longer exists. Now you are only allowed to press a button displaying your interest in the film as the interest score has been officially removed. Very bland, nothing going on, but then at the bottom you see, oh who wants to see the movie? Oh it's about 13,000. But if you compare that to yesterday, that means they've removed almost 25,000 fan ratings from the website. Rotten Tomatoes has officially given a reason for the change. Starting this week, Rotten Tomatoes will launch the first of several phases of updates that will refresh and modernize our audience rating system. We're doing it to more accurately and authentically represent the voice of fans while protecting our data and public forums from bad actors. But wait a minute, how do they decide who is a fan and who is a bad actor? I showed you yesterday some of the comments in the want to see section of the website for Captain Marvel, you saw people with positive comments, with negative comments. As of February 25, we will no longer show the want to see percentage score for a movie during its pre-release period. Why you might ask, we found that the want to see percentage score is oftentimes confused with the audience score percentage number. Now that's complete nonsense because I've not seen anyone confuse the want to see percentage for actual audience reviews and audience ratings for a film until recently when all these media websites shilling for Captain Marvel and the MCU fans who never seem to have an opinion of their own and they just go with whatever the media is telling them decided to spread these lies about how the movie is being review bombed. We are disabling the comment function prior to a movie's release date. Unfortunately, we have seen an uptick in non-constructive input, sometimes bordering on trolling, which we believe is a disservice to our general readership. Right, because the critics that you choose to post their reviews on your website, they don't come across as trolls to you when they make comments like this. No, they're, they're fine people. Oh yeah. We have decided that turning off this feature for now is the best course of action. Don't worry though, fans will still get to have their say. Once a movie is released, audiences can leave a user rating in comments as they always have. So how long do you think it will take to remove the audience ratings from the website? Now that they've clearly shown that fan discussion and ratings do not matter to them. Look, Rotten Tomatoes, owner, Fandango, since February 2016. Who's the leadership of Fandango? Uh, Paul Yanover. He's the president. Yanover served as EVP and managing director of Disney Online, where he oversaw all Disney branded initiatives on the internet and mobile web, from Disney.com to Disney's suit of premium digital products, including online games, virtual worlds, network of family targeted sites, and streaming service Disney Movies Online. Yanover began his career with Disney at Walt Disney Feature Animation and also served as SVP of Disney Parks and Resorts Online, overseeing the e-commerce business across Disney's resorts and theme parks. So if you gather all this evidence huh, that I've shown you in this video, you leave me no choice, Marvel, Brie Larson, you leave me no choice but to do this. So we go to YouTube and uh, we just copy all these videos about Captain Marvel because they're more fair and balanced than the mainstream media. Let's see, copy this son of a bitch. Let's go to Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. And we go to the Captain Marvel page. Oh, I forgot. 
I can't leave my review here anymore. So let's get away from Rotten Tomatoes. And we go to Letterboxd. And we go to the Captain Marvel page. What am I going to put? Uh, SJW. We'll put that in there. There's a tag. People can find it. Paste that motherfucker. And we leave it a little half star there. Huh? So there you go, everyone. There's my review for Captain Bree Mode. So click like because you know who I'm right. Let me know in the comments below. If you care, then you can share. And then you smash that mother. <laughs> subscribe button. So until next time, my knuckleheads. I'm Shorty. And you're not. Ta-ta.